Good morning. morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. A couple of announcements. First of all, voters' assembly is next week, uh, Sunday, May 23rd, following the worship service. Uh, The purpose is to call a new pastor. Um, Communion process today. Our senior graduates will uh, first take communion first together at the railing. Um, And after they have communed, then um, we will, uh, rec- they will receive a benediction and they will then have to leave to, together to get to their graduation. Um, then the rest of the congregation will uh, receive con- con- communion um, after they have finished. Let us begin our worship service. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But But if we confess confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most Most merciful merciful God, God, We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will consume me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon the rock. For my father and my mother have forsaken me. But the Lord will take me in. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait Wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father, for you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for today is recorded in Acts chapter 1. The disciples and others seek the Lord's will concerning candidates of his choice to replace Judas as leader of the church. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they had been staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these were with one accord, were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, and the scripture, had, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit broke, spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in his ministry. Now this man acquired a field from the reward, with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong he burst open in the middle and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language a caldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and there, let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who is also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, know, you who know our hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place of in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistle reading is recorded in 1 John chapter 5. The testimony of the apostles, of Jesus, and of the Spirit testify that God has given us light in his Son. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God, that he is born concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his, sin, his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he bears us in whatever we ask, he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. 
Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. As he prepares to go to the cross, Jesus prays that his disciples be united by faith in him. God's word is, God, is the truth that will unite his church. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the word has, hatred and has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they may be sanctified also in truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join now in the confession of our Christian faith as we speak together the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with the glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we join in singing our hymn.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In John chapter 17, verse 11, Jesus prays, Holy Father, keep them in your name which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. Our text for this morning is part of Jesus' high priestly prayer. Um, that's what we call, this is the prayer that follows those three discourses as Jesus taught his disciples in the upper room on Maundy Thursday. We talked about those last week. Um, the farewell is now ended. The Lord then follows with this prayer. His work is almost finished. In fact, it's so close to the end that he even speaks of it in the present tense. Jesus is about to be arrested and crucified, and in just hours, Jesus would be nailed to the cross for our salvation, and he would speak those words, it is finished. So first he prays that the Father's will is done in him. Then he prays for his disciples who have received his word and have believed his word, the word that he spoke to them while he was with them. He prays that the Father may preserve them in this hostile world and sanctify them in the truth of his word, equipping them to be apostles sent to proclaim the word of God to the world. And then he concludes by praying for his future disciples, those who will believe in him through their preaching of his word. Christ prays for our unity, that we may all be one, perfectly one in Jesus Christ, just as the Father is in him and he is in the Father, that we may also be in God. In short, we could say that Jesus is praying for the church, the communion of saints. Now, as we look at the church, it's really hard for us to see that unity in the church that Christ prayed for. We see that there are many confessions of faith, many denominations, and many divisions in our church. We see that there are, for example, Lutherans and Catholics and Methodists and Episcopalians and Baptists and Presbyterians and many more denominations or divisions in the church. We also see that there are even groups within these groups that have separate confessions or teach otherwise than what the Bible might teach, and that they aren't even in fellowship with those of the same church body. We all claim that we are children of the same God, disciples of the same Christ, and blessed with the same Holy Spirit. And yet our lack of unity keeps pastors from preaching in certain pulpits and Christians from communing at certain altars. As far as we can see, the church is not united as one. We call this the visible church. It's what we can see. We can see all kinds of people, all kinds of ideas, thoughts, and preferences. The visible church is filled with believers and unbelievers and hypocrites. There are biblical teachings and false teachings. There is true worship and false worship, truth and lies. I'm often asked, will my Catholic relatives go to heaven? or my Methodist friends, or my Baptist neighbors? And my answer is always, there will be Christians in heaven. For Jesus said, for this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. All I have to say is, 
thanks be to God, that unity in the church does not depend on me or you or any of us. By the mysterious working of God, there really is only one church. And this one church is the church we just confessed in the creed when we said, I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. There is only one church because there is only one Christ. The unity of the church depends on Christ. And he prays us into that eternity or into that unity by the words of our gospel today. Where Christ is, there is his church. And where Christ and his church are together, we are one. In the gospel today, Jesus prays for us that we may be one. By this prayer, Christ tells us that there is a unity and prays that that unity may continually be this be a unity. It, it is a unity in the Father and the Son, where Christ is in us. This unity rests on him abiding in us, and us in him. It's a divine unity of love. All wills bowing in the same direction, all affections burning with the same flame, all aims directed to the same end, one blessed harmony of love. This is the one holy Christian and apostolic church, the communion of saints, the whole number of all believers, all believers in Christ, but only believers are members of his church. We call this the invisible church because true faith is visible only to God, but invisible to our human eyes. It's what makes people members of this church, and we can't see it. There's only one means, both for working faith in us and for keeping us in that faith by which Christ unites us in the church, the word of the Father. The Holy Christian Church is found wherever the gospel is preached purely and taught properly and the sacraments are correctly administered. And in this church, Christ makes us one regardless of what we call ourselves. So why then will there be Lutherans and Catholics and Methodists and others in the Christian, other Christian denominations in heaven? Because wherever the gospel is taught, or read, or preached, the Holy Spirit is right there, working faith through it, calling us, gathering us, enlightening us, sanctifying us, and keeping us in that one true faith. Now the people of God united by Christ, this is the, the one church of God gathered around Christ to receive his gifts, sanctified in the truth of his word, and made one by his grace. So why then are there so many different confessions, different denominations, different divisions in this, what we might call, one church? Why are there so many denominations and divisions within those denominations, within the one church? That, question, that answer is easy. Sin. So, we all have sin. All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Our old Adam does not like what unites us. He doesn't like the name of Christ that binds us. He doesn't like the gospel that calls us and gathers us to Christ. He doesn't like the truth that we cannot, by our own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ or come to him, or that our Lord is willing to call us, gather us, enlighten us, and sanctify us, even though we are such poor, miserable sinners. So what do we do? We make stuff up. We manipulate the word of God to make it say what we want it to say. 
We interpret it falsely. We even add to it or subtract from it. We take our Lord's words out of their proper context. Though we may be hearing God's word, along with it, there are many who are hearing all kinds of dead ends. Those who hear God's word are gathered and united in his church, but those who follow the dead ends are lost. It's a common trait among us sinners. We who we cherish our own ideas and our own thoughts and our own preferences over the revealed name and word and truth of God. And those are the three things God uses to make us one. But while all those false teachings, those roadblocks um, and dead ends are being taught and preached, alongside of them, the word of God is heard as well. And the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. For while the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, because they follow their own ideas, thoughts, or preferences, to those who are being saved, it is the power of God which is at work in all believers and is able to save our souls. So God uses his name, his word, and his truth. God unites us as one in his name, in the sacrament of holy baptism. Through water and his word, God puts his name on us. And so we are called Christians, because in the sacrament we are all united to Christ. We're united to him in his life, in his death, in his resurrection, in his ascension, and in his eternal glory, because his name has been put on us. Christ is the head. We are the body, and by his grace, he makes and keeps us one by the power of his name. God also unites us as one in his holy word. The Holy Spirit uses the word of God to call us together as the church, to call us apart from this dying world, and to call us to faithfulness in the one true God. The world hates us because we're Christians, but Jesus has overcome the world. Christ has overcome the world and all our enemies, both spiritual and physical. Christ has overcome the world, and by his word, he invites us to himself in his victory over the devil, the world, and even our own sinful natures. And finally, God unites us in his truth. Now, God has united us in one in his name, for he has revealed himself to us. Um, he has taught us to know him. He has brought his picture as the redeemer of the world into our souls that we might put on whole trust in him and that in his name, in the confession of his name and in the faith, we might know the truth. And he unites us in his word, which is the truth itself. For everyone who receives the truth of the gospel receives forgiveness of sins, are kept in the word of faith and truth, and truth, and are sanctified and strengthened to carry out the will of our Lord for the proclamation, uh, the proclamation of the truth to others. As Christ has sanctified himself by offering himself upon the cross of Calvary, by rising from the grave on the third day, and by ascending to the right hand of God the Father Almighty, he has opened the way of heaven to all of us that you and I and every Christian may be sanctified by the truth, this truth. We are united as one in the church by the Holy Spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belonged to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is over all and through all and in all. By his name, his word, his truth in Jesus Christ our Lord, 
God the Father answers Jesus' prayer and makes us one. That means that you are one with every believing Christian on earth. You are one with all Christians who have the name of God put on them in baptism. You are one with all who hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the perfect and complete revelation of his truth. That in Christ and nowhere else do we have forgiveness of sins, life, and eternal salvation. So do not despair that to our eyes the church looks so broken and divided. For when we have these things in common, when the name of the Lord God is placed upon us, the word of God is given to us, and the truth of God binds us together, we are one. For Christ Jesus our Lord died for on one cross to forgive all the sins of all people, rose from one grave to open heaven to us all, gives us all his one and holy name, and speaks the word of God that makes us one. And his truth is the one and only truth in this world which saves us from the devil, the world, and even our own sinful flesh. Therefore, when Christ comes again, you and I, along with a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, Christians from every place and every age who have been united in Christ, will be standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in our hands, crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And along with all the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we will fall on our faces before the throne, worshiping God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Oh, hold on. <laughs> we join in singing the offertory. seated and at this time we would like to recognize our graduates um, and wish to them God's blessings as they move on from high school into their careers or college um, and into their careers and, uh, and, and offer them um, our best wishes as long as well as God's great blessing. Um, at this time, I will name them off, and they would, if they would, please stand and face the congregation as I call your name.
Caleb Hazenkamp. Rachel Grove. Alyssa Candies. Reese Knutson Snodgrass. Dylan Miller. Kaylee Oswald. Marshall Stahl. Sydney Swanson. Zach Vandergren. Brooklyn Weddell. <coughs> We wish you God's blessings in your future endeavors and pray that all that you do will be done to the glory of God. <laughs> you may be seated. Let us join in prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly King, once again you have gathered us before your presence. Grant that we may dwell in your house all the days of our lives and gaze upon your beauty manifested here in your word and sacraments. Graciously hear our prayers as we now inquire in your temple. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord of the church, you led your apostles to choose Matthias to replace Judas. Guide your church on earth as she calls and chooses men to serve in the apostolic office. Guide especially this church, as she calls also a new man to serve as pastor here, that your word would continue to grow and bear fruit. Keep all these men and bless their ministry. Keep them faithful to you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, our protector and savior, Look in mercy upon those suffering persecution for the sake of your name. Many have been forsaken even by father, mother, and friend. Take them into your family, hear their cries, and do not let them be afraid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all nations, since it is your will that we would pray for all in authority, we believe with confidence that you hear our prayers on behalf of our president, governor, congress, legislature, and judges. Teach them the testimony of truth, that they may be wise and effective in their offices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, you have testified that eternal life is given in your Son, that whoever has him has life. You also promise that you will hear whatever we ask according to your will. Hear now our prayers for all who are sick and in distress. For Nadine Petrosky, Kristen Courtney, Pearl Abrahams, Elaine Trainer, Anselm Wimmer, Bill Berry, Judy Johnson, Heather Wolfel, Donna Schilling, Leroy Wagner, Marlon Doat, and Landy Miller, we ask your blessings be upon them, that you strengthen them according to your good will, and give life to all uh, those who hold your Son in their faithful hearts. We pray for all our graduates, that you would bless them in all that they do, that they may be successful in, in their careers and, and go on to be God-pleasing citizens, not only of this world, but of your church. We pray also for all those who serve in police departments, all fire departments, EMTs, and first responders, as well as all health care workers, and all missionary, uh, military personnel, and all their families, as well as missionaries who serve near and far, both Jana Engelhardt and Josh Lang, and all others. We pray for Nancy Watson, Shay Miller's mother, who's visiting from out of state, and 
and celebrate with her her birthday today. We give thanks to you for all the blessings you give to each and every one of us, that in your Son, Jesus Christ, we might have eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as we eat and drink our Savior's body and blood, give us your light and salvation among the courageous hearts and never-failing hope that we may wait steadfastly for you and your final deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, accept the, answer, the, accept the prayers we offer through your Son, our Savior, and keep us forever in your name and word, that we may be one just as you are one. Sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Father, Almighty God, everlasting Father. Everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of this world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. By his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. And by his word, he joins us together as one. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, John, and all other witnesses of the resurrection, along with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when, we were, when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. 
This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Peace be with you. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we <coughs> implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our hymn.